Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to do a video today talking about Facebook security and uh, some proactive steps you can take to make sure that your Facebook, your Facebook Messenger, your WhatsApp, your Instagram, now not directly just because those are connected through Facebook, that those things don't get hacked and that they're not already hacked. Um, so here's a couple of things you can do and as in most things in life, uh, prevention is definitely better than cure. So if you can go in, you should really go into this Facebook security settings page every few months in order to make sure that there's nothing looking sketchy. Now there's a few ways potentially your Facebook could be compromised. Let's take the example of, you know, you're using your uh, Facebook, you're accessing Facebook from an untrusted computer, like some computer in a hotel or a hostel. And there's a few things that could go wrong there. For one, at a very simple level, if this is truly a scammer, there could be something like a keyboard logger that's just recording all the keystrokes. And that would be an incredibly easy way for anybody to uh, pick up your credentials. It's not even involving network sniffing. It's just literally a program on the computer capturing all the keystrokes. So if you happen to fall into the clutches of a scammer, that would be one way they could copy your credentials. Uh, if you're on a public Wi-Fi network and there's other devices on that network, then uh, you do run into the risk of uh, packet sniffing, which is when somebody else on that local network um, is able to listen in and intercept and decrypt the packages you're sending to the internet. A man in the middle attack is another possibility in that kind of a setup. That, that would be whereby somebody would create a website that looks very, very much like Facebook but the credentials are being captured by a carbon copy that sits in the middle and that carbon copy is operated by a scammer and they just have to have that replica sitting there and they're just sniffing, uh, well, picking up actually credentials. So there's a few things that could potentially go wrong, if you're, especially if you're using your uh, Facebook from a public hotspot. But this is just kind of a proactive security tune up you could say just to make sure everything's looking okay so i'm going to jump now into the facebook uh facebook settings page now what i'm looking at here is the security settings it's under settings security and login now first things first uh you can see here there is in the middle where you're logged in so this is this should be the first thing you should check and click on see more uh just to make sure that you have um everything all the current sessions now naturally this shouldn't be an encyclopedia. This would be a relatively short list of uh, computers currently logged in. Now, if you look at my uh, login activity here, you can see that I'm currently logged in from two computers. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I use Linux. Uh, not many people, not as many people use Linux. So the first thing I'm really eyeballing is, okay, well, is there any Mac computers or there's any Windows computers? So vice versa, if you're using Windows day to day, if you see a random Linux computer in a random place or a random Mac computer in a random place, that would be a tip off that something is amiss and you should check that out. Now, if, uh, if you're just going for an emergency situation, there is a button here saying log out of all sessions. One thing that needs to be pointed out here is you might, you, I might see this and say, hmm, Katsreen, that's weird. I'm not logged in. I don't live in Katsreen in Israel. I live in Jerusalem. Now, um, the name here is based on geolocation. So it's going to be looking at the IP address and trying to geolocate that, okay? So basically it's saying, where is this address? Where do we think, here's the public IP address being used to connect. Where do we think that is in the world? Now the public IP address is going to be a function of um, where your internet service provider, how it's reaching the internet, where it's going out to Facebook servers. Um, and again, that's just geolocated. So what you can do, now what I've done here is I've just hovered, I'm just gonna zoom in, I've hovered over Katsreen and you can see here it says IP and this is a um, IPv6 IP address, different looking thing than IPv4. So that's firstly, if you see something, if you really wanna check it out, that should be your first stage. 2A026F6F, C0, B72, CB00. So this is my current public IP address. Now what you want to verify is that this is your public IP address. Now to do that is really not hard. Google my public IP 
Uh, this is probably the easiest and quickest way and you can get to a website like mypublicip.com. Now what that's going to show you is your public IP address. Now this is a public IPv6, 2A026F. So just look at the first two. If it's a uh, IPv4 address, it's gonna be uh, shorter than this. So I can just look at 2A026FC0 and I can just compare this to A026FC0. So as I expected, uh, Katherine is indeed me and I'm not worried about Uniphone uh, because that's the uh, device uh, manufacturer of phone that I'm currently using and that's pretty obscure. So I don't see anything that looks amiss here. Um, I'm logged in from my phone, I'm logged in from my desktop, that's all okay. So that's number one is check out there and if you do see something weird, log out from all sessions. Um, Two-factor authentication is an absolute must if you're not using two-factor authentication, you should be using two-factor authentication. So make sure that's turned on. If you're not using two-factor authentication, turning that on should be the very first thing you do in order to try to tune up the security on your Facebook account. Now there's a couple, um, a couple more things that you definitely want to do blind spots as such here. Now this is, a, um, this is way too big. This is not what you want to be doing. This is a list of authorized logins review a list of devices where you won't have to use a login code. Now, if you've done something like you have uh, lost your phone, let's say, okay, you want, you're gonna want to retract access to that device from this authorized login list. Let's say you lost your phone at a party or something, uh, you'd have a lot of potential security headaches there. Firstly, hopefully you're using a, uh, a uh, login, a lock protector, um, on whatever, uh, whether it's an Android or an iOS, uh, that would be number one. But let's say you're not using that. So potentially whoever has picked up your phone and has powered on your phone is going to have access to every single app on your phone, including your Facebook. Um, so what you'd want to do in that case is just revoke access uh, to that device. So I'd go into that periodically and I would clean house anything, um, any computer, you've given um you've given that uh, that that access to um, and you get that by clicking don't ask me for um, when you when you log in through two-factor authentication don't ask me for this again and that'll save that device so you just want to make sure that that's a reasonably small list one more thing i do want to show here um, and that's basically about it in terms of the top line uh, security settings that you want to be implementing if you click on apps and websites. Now this is again, what I would call just best practice would be um, going through this and making sure that the list is limited. Let's take um, the journal.ie here, which is currently active, I added this. So sometimes you'll go onto websites and you'll see it'll say log in via Facebook and what this, what this, uh, what this application will receive. Now generally these are pretty trustworthy, big websites, let's say, okay? Um, so what we're doing here is we are seeing the journal.ie logged in with Facebook um, and it's receiving my name and my profile picture. Um, so that's not really too much information, but it's just go through that again. And if you see anything that you don't think should still be trusted, uh, it would be a good idea to go ahead and revoke that connection. So that's basically the main steps I would do in terms of going into my Facebook security page every, let's say, two to three months and just making sure that nothing was looking badly amiss. And if you do that, uh, you can definitely keep ahead of any attempts to access your Facebook account from unauthorized parties that may be malicious in nature. Thank you for watching. To get more videos about technology, Linux and other subjects, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.